Good evening and welcome to Gael. As you can see, we're back in the air after an absence of about one week. And what a week that was. In this program, we look back at the traumatic events which began on the evening of the 27th of July. In the midst of it all, Gael was there as the only Caribbean television crew covering the events. For this, we thank the courage and initiative of Banyan's world loveless, Daniel Defentala, TTT's Tony Solandi, and Rene Cummings of The Express. Through their efforts, we're able to bring you exclusive footage never before seen on local television. Tonight's program, we ask questions and we talk to some people not yet heard from and we open discussions so vital for the speedy recovery and reconstruction of our nation. At 6 p.m. this afternoon, the government of Trinidad and Tobago was overthrown. The Prime Minister and members of the Cabinet are under arrest. We are asking everybody to remain calm. The revolutionary forces are commanded to control the streets. Why has God given us the power over them? Why are we sitting here tonight before you? Who makes the decision in the universe? Is it not your creator? Where is the prime minister tonight to address the nation? Where is he? God has removed him. God has removed the authority, not the power, because no man, including myself, has any power. We have only temporary authority because we all die. Arising out of the, the principle of faith, complete faith in Allah, is there any justification within, within the, the laws and beliefs of Islam for this action that Abu Bakr has taken? Well, the Quran tells us, you know, where there is oppression of one form or the other, we should try and see whether we can help to relieve the oppression by going to the help of the oppressed, relieving them of the distress and so, and also to the oppressor, asking the oppressor to hold their hand with the oppression, whatever it is. Now this is the principle that has been laid in the Holy Quran, you see. But of course in Trinidad and Tobago you just cannot uh, take upon yourself the law. Um, how does the rest of the Muslim community feel about his actions? Do they disassociate themselves from it? Well, I think, I think uh, they look at it with abhorrence, you know. That it is, as I say, we are living in a very free democratic society where there's rule of law to which we adhere. And for such a thing to happen in the name of Islam, I think it's, it's abhorrent, you know. I mean, uh, I don't think Islam has anything to do with it. Because such an action where there is, and if I quote the verse of the Holy Quran for you, it states that, you know, um, the punishment of those who wage war against God and his messenger after peace and order has been established and strive with might and main to bring mischief and disorder to the land is execution or crucifixion. And this is in the chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, verse 36. Tu yomal irel fetir, ma sete takpirate, 
ವಾಜಬಲ್ಲಾಹಿ ತೋಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಾಹು ಅಕ್ಬರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾಹು ಅಕ್ಬರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾಹು ಅಕ್ಬರ್ as the head of a political organization what are your own and your organiz- organization's views of the actions taken by Abu Bakr well our view has always been that the people themselves must decide on on what kind of action must be taken the people themselves must initiate that no group can decide for the people um, how to go forward no group can decide for the people what methods should be used uh, the majority of the population must be involved in deciding what they want and and how they want to achieve it and i think therefore that um our view in addition to that of course is that the action historically of our people over the years has always been through discipline mass action just look at the last 18 months we have had the day of resistance last year march the 6th we had the oil strikes in september october last year you saw the nurses protest in june and july of this year and the protest of residents in barakpur in in june of this year now all of those things say something to us it says that this is how our people have always organized themselves to advance their interests they've organized themselves by discipline mass action they have done so within the existing framework um that is available to them that once they are democratic avenues available to the people to take their action that is how the people's will has to be effected and that is our view in other words violence cannot be justified when there are these avenues for discipline mass action to take place <laughs> Where to live man holding on to tin guns It's the survival of the fastest hand In the kingdom that brings the smartest man Just enjoy is the sorrow Peace of emergency exists in the Republic of Trinidad it's and Tobago Cause we don't do great We are asking everybody to remain calm. The revolutionary forces are commanded to control the streets. There shall be no looting. We are We are the body you born. There once was a place here, yeah, there once was a land where the people toiled daily, both woman and man. They worked to the bone. But they were not alone Cause they cared for each other And this land was their home Till one day black gold Spouted out from the ground From the earth it did spill Spreading wealth all around And they all became It's very important that every day I encounter some form of racism And I, I can speak very surely for myself I, I am Trinidadian I, I was born here I play pan, I play football I knock about like everybody else I'm 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 not from anywhere else than Trinidad and unfortunately a lot of certain certain groups in Trinidad feel otherwise and feel free enough to voice their opinions in public groups and, and, and in, in many instances I feel shell shocked violated I feel as though I'm a drift on the sea and there's not a life raft in sight this is not simply financial loss as some commentators are want to describe it No is it merely an effort in concrete and steel this is the result of generations of blood sweat and tears of generations of my family's hard work of the people who work with us of the now deceased carpenter who built the beautiful roof that my father was always so proud of the beautiful ceiling rather so it is not merely a question of dollars and cents here it is a traumatic emotional loss Well looting is a phenomenon that takes place in a number of contexts it takes place in contexts even of affluence in a way you know people are uh, a bundle of instincts uh and sometimes when the conditions are ripe they do things which they would not normally do you know people are deterred from looting by the forces of the presence of the forces of the law 
they're also deterred by um, you know socialization education which tells you not to do certain things but when those uh, constraints are, are removed people do things which they would regret the next day you know they follow a multitude to do evils so the looting might have had something to do with the economic circumstances of the country but a lot of people went out there and saw people looting and simply followed fashion why people decide to loot a simplistic answer is that people loot because they are poor and they are oppressed and so on. And that certainly appears to be part of the reasons for the looting. But if the reports which I have heard are correct from eyewitnesses, many of the people who were looting were armed with vehicles which are not the kind of, of, of equipment you expect the poor to have. In other words, the looting appeared to have incorporated middle class people as well as, as other people so called. Now the reasons why people loot are, are pretty complex. You probably need a a psychologist or a sociologist to suggest to you. But certainly I think that the, the mood of the country immediately prior to the incidents, also the events, the mood of the country was one of uh, widespread, if you wish, frustration, economic concerns were paramount in people's mind, as well as I think a sense of, of despair and a sense that no one cared as it were at the top in terms of those who could make sense. Certainly was the perception that people had, I would argue. I feel when it's the cry of the people, and the cry of the people, the voice of the people is the voice of God, then that's the way the people really feel, so they react this way. They cannot really help that feeling. So they gave vent to this, they went out and just satisfied this feeling, just let loose, you know. So you agree with Imam Abu Bakr when he said that 90% of the population felt the way that he felt? Yes, yes, I agree with him when he said 90% of the population felt the way, but they, 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 see, they just didn't have their belly. You know, that, 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 had, that had to really come out and show, you know, what they really had inside them, you know. They, you see, they, 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 they backed, you know, they, they, were, they were rather coward, you know, they didn't have the belly to really come out and support Abu Bakr, but people really feeling it, they were really feeling it. So you feel he should be claimed as a hero or as a villain? Yeah, yeah, he should be going as a hero, yeah, go down to book a, book a Guinness. So, but it wasn't necessary for people to be going thieving and looting because it affecting us so, as business people and other business people outside. Have a lot of women today and men without jobs. So, and now what really happened, it make it more difficult yet. Got plenty of people right now will be very suffering financially because there's a lack of job right now. So this, is, this thing happened, maybe we've been watching it as something wrong. Our prime minister could have been killed. We could have been out of work, plenty of other serious things could have happened, but it, it, it's a lesson for everyone, for the minister and the prime minister himself, to know that you cannot mess with people, especially hungry people. Well, I, I'm really saddened about what really take place on the side, no, especially when you went into town and you know it's all these buildings are just burned down and you know a lot of people will be you know, out of jobs, you understand, it just kind of send the country right back. It would consist largely of the not so old and certainly the not so employed, <laughs> the people who are finding that they are without jobs. They don't have these amenities of life, including those that may be a, a little bit uh, luxurious. You must never discount the fact that in a society like ours, people keep pushing through advertising and so on, that to be happy, to be, to be well off and so on, you must have your video, you must have your fridge, you must have your high top sneakers and, and, and so on. It is not unusual that under circumstances like these, when people get a chance to gain access to these, uh, let's call them, elements of high living or of even average living for that for that matter it's not unusual in most homes to find a refrigerator a stove and, and and so on in such a situation people are going to take advantage of it to loot the stores to furnish themselves and of course to use it as a means of earning income they will sell some of the goods that, that they have stolen i am not condoning and they all became merchants with stores big and small till i come to down they had a great fall with me up when the dream is gone. Don't I heard you say to remain calm the and to stay indoors until further notice. This will allow the protective services with the signal from TTT being jammed, alternative arrangements had to be made for transmission. Soon, Radio Trinidad, along with TTT, was back on the air, operating from Camp Ogden. But people still shouting power, power.
power to the people and solidarity flagging me even Tiananmen Square. It's essential to assure that our people were safe because their lives were in danger based on the threats by the, by the extremists, the fundamentalist extremists. Um, once we, our people got out, and this was on Sunday, they got out early in the morning and we got confirmation on Sunday after lunch. We mobilized what equipment we could. In fact, the equipment, you, the equipment you're seeing on the tip is all jewelry rigged. Our engineers have done a very fine job of putting together during the equipment with a home stereo system. We got our transmitters, which are in another part of the country, up Cumberland Hill, restarted. And with that, we were able to get back on the air with some very basic programming. This time to Brooklyn, Howard B. And there he goes again, running through the streets of Soweto. Yep, when that dream is gone, don't I heard you say, I think you went about it, you may be wrong. He could uh, move like, organize the people more educational-wise, had more peaceful demonstration, get the people more to think and, you know, try in a peaceful way to try and solve this problem because, as the old people say, this is only the smoke, the fire behind, right? This is, that's the smoke. It's the people that must come first in, in a situation. If it's one thing that we must learn, is that people must come first. So if we're talking about rebuilding Port of Spain, it has to be not how much steel and concrete we're going to pour into the place, not, not how much money is going to be spent on restocking um, stores that were looted and so on. It must be, what about the people who had lost their jobs? What about those families that have been dislocated and so on? How are we going to place people first in our society? And I think that that is crucial. And we have to rethink. We have to rethink the IMF World Bank program. If there's to be national unity, if there's to be a real process of healing in our society, then we must rethink those economic policies and come up with new policies and new strategies which place the basic needs of people first. Will our children stand firm? Or will they keep running and running and running to the end of time? 1990, will hands of love ever reach out? Or will they be there just to strengthen the crime? It is strange, more we change. When the dream is gone Thought I heard you say The party is over But we look like he jamming no star Jamming no star The way ambitious man Treat your own brother man From these events We must try to understand It's grim and it's bad Crucial, brutal and sad Who say it can happen in sweet Trinidad Was like a strange red house wedding with the cake tea and tea They called for the preacher and they all drank some tea But Mr. and Mrs. Bullet really did not agree That whole shotgun wedding was not long to be When the dream is gone Doctor heard you say the party is over, but it look like the jamming all down. We come me up when the dream is gone. Thought I heard you say the party is over, but it look like the jamming all down, jamming all
Use both hands. Turn around. Put it down. Empty your right knee pocket. Empty your left knee pocket. What is the, impl the implication, as you see it, in the psyche of the of Trinidadians and Tobagoans? This whole drama. Well, it's difficult to say. You know, Trinidadians are very, very resourceful uh, people, and I would not be surprised. At one level, let me answer at one level. But within three or four months, that we would be, you know, back to our normal ourselves. Of course, the event leaves certain scars on the the political system. For example, if I were a young man thinking of a political career, I would think twice. You know, why go through that kind of trauma? In other words, I think it's going to induce a certain element of um, disenchantment with uh, the politics as a vocation that many people who felt that they wanted to get involved in political activity are going to think twice about the risks that are involved, not only to their physical selves, so to speak, but, um, you know, they've seen how people react to leaders. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are willing to have the people in parliament uh, die. They were expendable. You know, would I want to go into politics knowing that if I take steps which prove to be unpopular, that people are going to consider me expendable and say, well, you know, you die to save the system. And I think it has traumatized those people who were in parliament. And I would think it would leave some very serious scars on the minds of people who had thought of our politics as a vocation. I want to say very short, eh? what I think eh? that you have a saying that say that God will sleep, eh? God will wear pajamas, right? The old people say so, God will wear pajamas, and I feel well, what happened? It really happened for the best, it happened for good. And they say out there, evil commit good, and I feel it's a good shake up for the country. Huh? It's a good shake up and waking up for the country, not only for the poor, but for the rich, both rich and the poor. So this country could be a better country again, you know? <laughs> Where to live, man holding hand to tin guns. It's the survival of the fastest hand. In the kingdom that brings the smartest man. Chase enjoy is the sorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow, come. 
we must face the morning after, cause we don't do grace. They found me in this place, in this key, on that solid base. Don't do it if we let the change get out of range. On the 1st of August, Emancipation Day 1990, the hostages were released, bringing an end to the six days of crisis. But is it really the end? Perhaps for the nation, this is just the beginning. Certainly, we must put the past behind us and look towards a brighter future. Change was what it was all about. And undoubtedly, change will come. But what kind of change, however, will depend on an honest and in-depth analysis. Only through a thorough understanding of what really happened here could we hope to learn from this experience and perhaps even prevent it from ever happening again?